There's a couple different ways to find the slope of a line. This is lesson 22D, and of course I've got links to 22A, B, and C in the description. Slope is the measure of steepness of a line on a graph. And we can find the slope or steepness of a line by dividing the vertical rise by the horizontal run between any two points. Did you know that the part of the stairs right here, each of these parts are called the riser on stairs? Well, to find the slope of a line, we would count the rise and divide it by the run. We make a nice right triangle. It's the rise over the run. And if the slope is a positive number, the line will rise to the right. And if the slope is a negative number, it'll fall to the right. So here's the first way I can show you. We find the slope by picking two points on our line. So if we're given a line and there aren't even points on it, we can pick points. We make a right triangle with a third point where the rise and the run intersect. See, it makes a nice right triangle. So this one has points on the line, so we can make our right triangle here, and we can do the rise and the run and count them. There's six squares for the rise and three for the run. So we're going to do six divided by three. Now, if we don't have any points on the line, we can pick points. We just find where the three meet, the X, the Y, and our line. See how all three meet here? So right at the crosshairs there, that's where we would pick. If you picked a point to find the slope and it was in the middle here where only the line and maybe Y intersected, you wouldn't be quite sure what the value for X was. Is it a 7.4, a 7.5, a 7.412? We're not sure, but if we pick the crosshairs, like right here, right here, here's another one, see that? Where they meet exactly? Then we can deal with these whole numbers and it's easier for us. We count the number of squares it takes to get to that third point. Six and three. The amount of squares we count horizontally is the run and the amount of squares we count vertically is the rise. And the slope is the rise divided by the run. So this is six divided by three, which simplifies to two. So the slope of that line is a two. We use this method when we to find a slope when we're given a graphed line. Whether it has points on it or not, we can pick points. Okay, you just look at the rise and the run and you get the slope. Well, we can also find the slope of a line by using the slope formula. And this formula will be included on the page of formulas they'll give you for the GED test. So this is the formula. It's the change in Y values divided by the change in X values. And we can determine which x and y values to use from a set of ordered pairs by their subscripts. Those are these little numbers right here, this little 2, this little 1, little numbers on the lower right. So this is saying the second y minus the first y. Here's the first x and the first y, the second x and the second y. And the way you read the subscripts are x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. So because we have to do y sub 2 minus y sub 1, we're going to do 5 minus a negative 1. Then we're going to do 7 minus 4. We substitute these values into the slope formula to find the rise and the run, which will simplify as the slope. So 5 minus a negative 1, remember we're going to add the opposite when we subtract a negative. So we're going to have 5 plus a positive 1. That's the opposite of negative 1. That means we have 5 plus 1. That's a 6. Then we do 7 minus 4, which is 3. We simplify this and the slope is a 2. And this method is used to find a slope when we're given ordered pairs. So if you're given a graphed line, just count the rise and the run. If you're given ordered pairs, use this formula, okay? We only need two sets of ordered pairs to use the slope formula. If we're given more, just use two of them. If, it's, if it gives you a graph and ordered pairs, you could use either way. You could graph three ordered pairs and pick two of the points to find the rise and the run or just pick two of the ordered pairs and substitute them into the slope formula and find the slope. Remember points on a line are labeled with capital letters. It's not just points on a line, it's points on an angle, points on a polygon, vertices. They use capital letters for labels to identify them. Do not confuse this with X and Y values. Those are lowercase letters.
okay so that's how you know right away you can tell apart a variable from a labeled point is because those are capital letters and the variables are always lowercase letters if a line is horizontal its slope is zero a line can even be actually on the x-axis going following the x-axis and if a line is vertical it has no slope even when it's on the y-axis so a line can actually appear on the y-axis and if two lines are parallel to each other well if they're parallel to each other they're gonna have the same slopes their slopes will be identical the same and ordered pairs of the points are chosen from left to right so if we have a line that's rising to the right that's our first ordered pair and that's our second ordered pair if it's falling then that's our first one and that's our second one so we go from left to right and you know that this is a positive slope because to get from the first one to the second one you have to go up see so that would be a plus and for this one to go from the first point to the second point you'd have to fall and go down so it'd be minus numbers see so here's a positive slope it's going to rise to the right and if we count the rise and the run we get a seven divided by a three and our slope is two and one third so a slope could be a mixed number a fraction a decimal all right and this negative slope when we count the rise and the run we go down nine so it's a negative nine and we go over five so we have a negative nine divided by five and that comes out as negative one and four fifths to get from this first point to this second point we have to go down so it's a minus see it's falling here our graphed line is actually on the x-axis we have the first point two for x zero for y and eight for x and zero for y when we plug it into this formula and we'll talk about how this m means slope in a couple videos we're going to do this zero minus that zero and then that eight minus the two we get a zero divided by six that's a zero so it's okay if the zero is the numerator our answer is going to be a zero all right now this line is running straight across horizontally and it's got no rise and the run is a five between this point and this point and zero divided by five is zero so our slope is zero but look at this one this is completely vertical there's no run at all it's just got a rise of 11 and the run is a zero and that's no slope so there's a big difference between zero slope and no slope because you can't have a zero as a denominator you can't divide by zero it's considered undefined like you it can't be done so if this comes up on one of the questions and you see that the run is a zero your answer should be that there's no slope okay that's the answer this line is graphed actually on the y-axis so we have a zero for x and a nine for y and a zero for x and a four for y if we do four take away nine we're going to get a negative five aren't we but we have a zero for a denominator and we can't do that can't have a zero for a denominator that's no slope you can't divide by zero okay and you have two parallel lines their slope is identical the pink line has a slope of negative two for the rise and four for the run and the blue one has a negative two for the rise and a four for the run they're the same slope they're parallel to each other they are going the same slope see after we reduce it the slope is a fractional amount see so slopes can be fractions and decimals and mixed numbers too all parallel lines have the same slope so you should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 257 and following this video are going to be three videos from my algebra one playlist that i'm including into this ged playlist so watch them if you really want to understand about slope and if you don't want to watch them you can just skip down through the playlist to lesson 22e where we talk about finding the distance between two points and we're going to use the distance formula it's lesson 22e and don't forget i've got the entire playlist of algebra word problems that'll help you and of course i'll have those links to the previous videos and helpful ones in this description all right so 
I really think you're going to be okay. Just if you start to become confused, watch the side videos or backtrack, regroup, and move back a few videos and then come forward again, all right? And that way you'll not miss anything. We've only got a couple more lessons to go until we get into lesson 23, and that's geometry. Because it was only five lessons for all of Algebra 1. Then we're going to get into geometry up here, okay? So, I'll see you next time. Keep trying. Bye.